Social Plug Podcast. Let's go. What's up, everybody? My name is Jerry Salceda. You are plugged into the Social Plug Podcast, y'all, where we connect you to level up, powered by Social Plug Media, and we discuss ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Today's episode is sponsored by none other than Dat DJ. Boom. I am DJ Jerry, my co-host right here and cousin, MC Jesse. What's up, Jesse? What up, everybody? How you guys doing? It's hey. Friday, man. I'm feeling good. Yes, we are, man. Bringing the energy today. Hey, let's not forget our producer behind the scenes and behind the camera, our boy J-Rock. What's up, J-Rock? What is happening, guys? Man, I, I brought some energy today. Ready. Je- Jesse sounds like he should be on a radio show all day long. I think so, man. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a face for radio, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, he's definitely got a face for radio, bro. <laughs> this is not a face for radio. I'm going to call it that's Crow's Feet Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. We were just, uh, Jesse got here to the city. He's like, "Bro, ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? I gotta go get my my beauty sleep." So yeah. he's gotta go get his beauty sleep for her. y'all getting down this weekend. Yeah. How are y'all at this weekend? Man, we're everywhere. Yeah. Um, actually, tonight I'm at Downtown Social. Tonight, see you guys out there. Yeah, and then uh, Jerry. So Friday night. Yeah, I'm at Backyard in Seguin. Very cool. Yeah, variety venue. How y'all liking that? By the way, man, I, I I went out and did some um coverage over there at the backyard. Say about a year ago, and um, Freddie's an awesome guy, man. Uh, yeah, he's the best. Shout out to Freddie, and boom. Uh, so I'm excited. Where, where how, yeah, how's things going out there, bro? I feel like it's a hidden gem, man. That, that's what I love because it's kind of like you really cannot find anything else like it around with all the options, everything they've got going on. So the cool thing is it used to be an elementary school, right? So you're like, man, they turned an old elementary school yeah, into this really, really cool. cool venue. Yeah. Shops, restaurants, drinks, outdoor venue for entertainment, family fen- friendly and pet friendly, which you don't find too many places like that. So super yeah. cool. Yeah. I mean, awesome. how many places do you know that you can actually hang out till midnight or even later sometimes with the kids, with the pets. Mm-hmm. So it's very unique. And um, actually, I love it, man, because how often do you get to go out with your parents? Yeah, You know, I don't know if you guys remember a place called uh, Chacho's back in the day. It was mm-hmm. real yeah. huge. Yeah. Like, you know, San Antonio, in, in, right? San Antonio area. Yeah, but San I thought Antonio. that was place was so cool because you can actually go see bands. There's a playground outside. Mm-hmm. And it was like family friendly, but you can actually drink alcohol. So this is kind of what... Um, the backyard is doing in Seguin. Yeah. Bring your family out, bring your kids out, bring the dogs out, bring them all out. Let's I go. And I wouldn't necessarily say this in a Hispanic thing. I think, you know, everybody does this, but us being Hispanics growing up with our families, you saw that your cousins came, you know, your, yeah. your uncles were out there, aunts were out there having fun all together. And I think that's really cool what you can do out there with the backyard. It is. And, and that's the thing <laughs> is it reminds you literally of like just hanging out in the backyard, being yeah. at your house. That's yeah. kind of like the feel. They're very family environment. You know, people just have a nice drink, being under the stars. You know, it's kind of hot during the summer, but, you know, we got fall coming up soon, so yeah. it's going to feel real good. Feel real good. You yeah. know what I'm really liking about this, guys, is this, too. Um, we ask other people, other people in the industry, about backyard, and they're, they, they say what they say, you know, and I'm not going to say that because whether their feelings or not, the thing I love about y'all too is y'all can go and grab something and y'all just turn it into something else that's y'all's, you know, and that's what I love about what y'all do is that DJ, you know, and if you've never seen these guys do, uh, get on stage and perform the way they do guys, uh, you're missing out, you know? So, um, I love that again, other people are saying different things about the backyard because of the, the, the way the, uh, atmosphere is, but I think you are going to take it and turn to something great and everybody doesn't have to follow suit. So. That's what I love about y'all, man. So keep working hard, man. I hope so. Uh, we're excited for it, though. That's for sure. We are excited, and it's cool to see Seguin, man, just up and coming, man, and it just keeps growing they're and growing, growing over and there. getting yeah, better and better, man. It's 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 cool, and we're all in. So yeah, whatever cool. we can do, I mean, obviously, we're only one person each, right? So we can't be everywhere, but at the same time, if we have free time, we're going to be there for That's sure. Right. Mm-hmm. And guys, so shout outs again to these guys for showing up today. And he, they're not, Johnny's not missing. He's not, you know, anything's going on with Johnny. Johnny is, uh, we're, we're wanting to have different hosts on here. And with Jerry and Jesse, they are uh, not only amazing on the mic and great entertainers, but they're going to be able to come in here and be hosts and um, bring in different guests and things like that. So we're, we're having these guys run, run, run with it today and uh, take over the host spot. There you go. Yeah, man. Hey, and shout out to Mr. Johnny Martinez, man. <laughs> He's at the bar high, you know, uh, when you talk about podcasts, social plug media, everything that they're doing. I just want to say shout out to uh, Mr. Johnny Martinez because, you know, 
he doesn't uh, half-ass anything, man. I don't know he does not half-ass anything. He's Dude. all in, and oh, yeah. uh, the number of people that he creates a platform for is just incredible. So, no, yeah, it's, it's great. That. And he always says level up, and he means it. He really does. <laughs> it's on his yeah. table right there in front of you, everything, man. Oh, yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even yeah. see yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how tired Jesse is over yeah, here. Yeah, man, I'm everywhere. So much he needs a rest over here. Jared, I called me. I was like, I got 94 minutes. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm good for. <laughs> and I think we're all like that, though. I love that. Is like we are taking advantage of every single minute, every hour, every second, all that good stuff. And uh, it's it's definitely motivating us and stuff. So, well, Jerry, let's get to our guest, man. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, hey, so talking about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And what I love about our next guest, I feel like, man, we all got a, a, a similar thread in there, right? You know, I know for myself, kind of just feeling like, man, I'm just like everybody else. And you know what? Being able to do some extraordinary things, being surrounded by extraordinary people. So today we have another extraordinary guests doing some amazing things here. So I'd like to introduce our guest over here, Selena Via Gomez. And Selena, she is the owner of Sal's Roofing Empire. Wow. Yeah. Man, is that not a badass name? So doing big yes. things. So welcome to the show. <laughs> yes, you. welcome, Selena. Thank, welcome, welcome, thank you for welcome. having me. Heck yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, so we were talking a little bit earlier, actually, because some Guests might be saying, hey, so tell us about the name, you know, Sal's Roofing Empire. So tell us kind of the story behind that. What's behind the name? Yeah, most definitely. So um, Sal was the name that I had growing up. It was my nickname. And I wanted, I didn't want to say Selena's Roofing Empire because I don't want to use the singer, obviously. <laughs> so um, I wanted to kind of, you know, to be different, still have me in it. Um, so what I did was I just used my nickname and when people call, they see Sal, they think mm -hmm. it's going to be obviously a guy because Sal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> roof. Yeah. And so, um, and then when I answer, it's always like, oh, um, is Sal, is this Sal? And I'm like, this is her. And they're like, oh, okay. And then, you know, yeah. the conversation just there starts from there. And I was asking you earlier. So actually, so it is S-A-L-E-N-A, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, I love that. And I just thought, so Roofing Empire, that just sounds extremely confident, right? So what made you decide to say, hey, we're going to call it Roofing Empire? Um, I wanted it to be an empire um, because it's something that I want to build, something that I'm building for my children. You know, most um, parents want to give their kids a car or a house. I want to have something when they're ready. Like, you know, if they don't want to do roofing. You know, I know... Um, one of my sons is going to be, he, he already wants to join, you know, so he doesn't have to have it. It's not something yeah. that my kids need to have, but it's there for them when they're ready. So, mm -hmm. you know, I needed to start now and build. And so we all, you know, they help sometimes my older ones, but most of the time I don't even want them to even be there. I'm like, no, no, I don't want you climbing the ladder. No. <laughs> you know, you so. You're like, we don't got insurance for that. Yeah, but. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and how old's the uh, how old's the oldest one? Um, he's twenty. Oh, so he's ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's more like he wants to go to school for business, mm -hmm. um, lawyer. So okay. I don't know. He might just do the business. He, he can definitely yeah. be part of the business. Yeah, yeah. Ways yeah to they, be they're there, all going to help <laughs> some way. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's interesting? So um, I I love asking people this question because when I share it, I think uh, you know, I'm a DJ now. But the first thing I can remember I wanted to be when I grew up was a paleontologist. Like, I actually want to, like, dig up dinosaur bones. So I'm curious. So, you know, did you think when you were a little girl, you're like, man, I'm going to grow up and I want to be a roofer. I'm going to be doing roofs. No. So, you know, what do you, um, you want to be when you were, when yeah. you were little? What was the goal? Uh, honestly, <laughs> I wanted to be a nun. Really? Well, I mean, then, <laughs> I really? And then? Yes, That's the first I, time I've yeah, ever heard that. Heard that I did. I, I was brought up Catholic. I'm not Catholic anymore, but mm. that was like my, I don't know. I just wanted to, I think I've always had a servant's heart is what it is. And I just always wanted to do what was right. And just, I don't know. I just always said like, oh, I want to be a nun. My mom was like, no. <laughs> no, I didn't know at the time what that meant. I know now, but when I was little, I didn't so know. So you were about to become that. Mother Selena. Yeah. Yeah. So, man. Oh, man, that's yeah. hilarious. What did you want to be, Jesse? I actually wanted to be a dancer. I mean, oh, really? I've, I've, I've okay. always been... For those of you who know me since I was a kid, you guys know I've been doing the same thing ever <laughs> since I was like maybe in kindergarten. I don't know if you guys know Sharita Manny, but her and I sat together in um, pre-K mm -hmm. and she was the one who got me into dancing, believe it or not. And man, we would just dance, practice, talent shows, and it's all I've ever wanted to do, believe it or yeah, not. I always wanted to join the military for yeah. sure. So I was blessed to be able to do that. 
Um, but anyhow, yeah, that's actually what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a, a dancer, a backup dancer. That's what's up. So I, I kind of lived it out, I guess. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and you said, Jerry, what was it? The paleontologist. Paleontologist. Because I can remember going on a field trip in elementary school, actually not too far from here. We went on a field trip and, you know, they said, hey, we're going to dig up some uh, dino- dinosaur fossils today. Mm-hmm. We got to see tracks and stuff like that. And I just something about being outside discovering kind of doing all that that's when i was like ah you know i want to do that maybe he was watching like indiana jones too right yeah so, <laughs> yeah and don't we're, we're gonna catch uh jerry after we eat um some chicken he's gonna be looking through the bones <laughs> <laughs> <Lame. Digging. laughs> I, I always I, you, you, if you ask me when I, I mean obviously everybody knows i wanted to be a wrestler you mm-hmm. know and then after i got to be like middle school i was like all right i wouldn't be a basketball player but it was pretty cool that i got to stay within both of those ranges for a little bit you know very so, cool but that's what i'm awesome. talking about well, that's yeah. kind of a big thing, too, that I kind of want to bring this core group together right here. And when I say that is because we all have our pieces of what we're done for this town. And when I say this town, um, we're in New Braunfels and all of us grew up here, guys, like in New Braunfels, you know what I'm saying? And I mm-hmm. kind of wanted to talk about me and Selena met, had met up, Selena met up and we talked about um young being young in this town and having that small town mentality you know and we had a really good conversation about that and all of us being from new Braunfels, and we can start off with jerry just it doesn't matter which one starts but what would you say you know did you feel that way or did you always feel like you had a big mindset to want to grow out of this town yeah you know i'll answer that right away because i i always felt like i knew i was a big city personality in a small town community okay like i just had such an affinity for you know that either that lifestyle uh, that desire to kind of be in a place like that where it was always non-stop something on the go and i think it's just i still what i see today my creative mind does not stop and i just am able to, to visualize visionary and see things that are intangible and kind of create from that and uh, so i was always drawn uh whether to uh big cities i love that it just gives me a lot of good energy um sometimes that's why i make sure to uh maybe go and work in a town like austin or san mm-hmm. antonio that aren't too far from us and just putting myself in an environment where i feel like there's just good energy flowing nice yeah yeah he'll do that i'll call him and be like hey what are you doing because he's like oh i'm just at a coffee shop in austin just doing some insurance work. yeah and your yeah. social not too long ago and i i really should do that too myself man that's yeah. probably would make it feel like you're in a different app i mean different area right and it makes mm-hmm. you just feel like you're in that that big city you mm-hmm. know so i think uh for me I, I think i owe everything to dance because as soon as i was a dancer and i really start to you know drive and go to different locations i mean i was everywhere i was dancing anywhere and everywhere i could and then when I joined the military, I traveled all over. So I always knew as soon as I was growing up as a kid, I was like, New Braunfels is not where I belong, at least for not now, you know. And uh, I was so blessed to be able to <laughs> live in different states, go into the military and do everything I was able to do for 18 years straight. I mean, I lived in New Orleans for 16 years nearly. And then I lived in Destin, Florida. And I lived in Washington State, Georgia, North Carolina. I mean, yeah. I lived everywhere because of the military. And that's why I try to encourage as many young high school kids out there, man, join the military, I feel, because it gives you a sense of uh, responsibility, respect. You learn so much. And then plus, you open your mind to so many different new environments. And then you just learn a little bit everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. So it really helped me. So to piggyback on your question, man, yes, when I was growing up, I was like, I got to get out of here. I got to go explore, man. So I was lucky to do that for two decades of my life. There you go. That's awesome. So, Selena, what was that like yeah. for you? Yes. Like we were talking about, you know, here you are now doing big things, like being an entrepreneur. I mean, growing up in New Braunfels here, we're all from here. And the city was a lot smaller back mm-hmm. then than it was now. Yeah. So what was that like for you? Um. Well, I do know growing up, being put in a category, um, especially like in school and stuff, you know, we had a program that was upstarts at that time. And um, there was just, you know, all our friends and they were at risk, you know, because of where we grew up, what right. side of town we grew up in. Um, and so it, it was like, I didn't think that I could ever get out. Um, I think the first time I traveled anywhere was to Florida. And it was for the band trip. And I mean, it was like, oh, my gosh, like everything just seems yeah. so different. Yeah. And um, I encourage I encourage my kids and tell them, like, get out, just get out and get out of this town to see what's out there, because you don't know because you're just, you know, you're boxed in. Um, and a lot of times, too, I always heard growing up um, 
you know, these at risk kids, they're the ones that are going to stay behind because they don't know how to get out of here. They don't know. Yeah. You know they're going to be the ones that are going to run the restaurants or, you know, in the back, though. They didn't yeah. say, you know, they didn't encourage the, hey, they're going to be the restaurant owner. It was, oh, well, they're going to be the ones working in the back or they're the ones going to be working the Sonic or, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So I think it was. I'm thankful for that. That's some, that's where I started seeing entrepreneurs was from the upstarts um, and just listening. And, you know, we would travel like to Luling or whatever. And um, So wait real quick. So upstarts, that was a, a built in like program mm-hmm, that you were involved in. Was that was that by choice that you got involved with that or what attracted you to um, get involved there? It, communities and schools had put me in it. And wow. it was kind of like they just brought, you know, these kids and. Um, it was after school, you would stay and they would help you with your homework. Um, sometimes you'd go on trips, but it was funded, you know, by the school. And then hmm. little by little, I kind of hear, started hearing stuff like um, you could get loans or grants and that's how they kept it going. Mm-hmm. But um, it stopped, you know, New Braunfels kind of put a stop yeah. to it. Cause they could, I, I do remember us going to Canyon, trying to get Upstart started there because it was with New Braunfels, okay. ISD. So they had to get approval. Um, mm-hmm. And I do know that they started to, you know, hit because, you know, back then it was different. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's where we came in too, because that's when the Westside Community Center was built. Dr. Campos yes. mm-hmm. uh, created the Westside Community Center here, mm-hmm. which, um, uh, that's where my heart's at, man, growing up in this town, um, getting there, being and put in uh, just like a program myself like that, you know, and we would go there after school. Pete Revis would show us how to lift weights and uh, they would let us play basketball and then they would work with us uh, with, with school. Um, but I felt like that was growing up here was kind of like the mentality was that. And it, it maybe was our parents having that small town mentality, too. Uh, but it was like, you go to work, come home, you know, you worry about the family type deal. It's where like, I think, and at least in my, some of my friends, it was like, we, I started learning the go-go thing with the sports. Sports is what taught me to always be on track and always do things. Uh, but again, I think that's where, um, getting those same opportunities that sometimes that our parents would teach us at home, like you're not, you're probably not going to do that because of this, or you're not going to do that because of your skin color. You're not going to, and I think that was a lot of what they're thinking was where now it's like, man, all of us can be successful, which is why I love to be around Johnny. Cause Johnny explains that Johnny's like, I don't give a fuck what color your skin is. You can, you know, you can you start, put your mind start right. from the border. Now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, so you, know, you so, so, so commonalities, right? So Selena mentioned it, uh, J rock, you were mentioning, it. you know, they were like, whether intentionally or unintentionally, you actually got to see people around you that were either being models, being mm-hmm. mentors. So I'm curious about that, you know, and asking uh, Jesse, maybe yourself too, and, and Selena, but who were maybe by, did you have mentors specifically in your life that really were those people? Um, or looking back now, can you say, man, there were some important people in my life. I didn't realize what they were doing, but they were mm-hmm. a big influence in my life. Like, who were those people? Yeah. yeah. Selena, you want to go first? Yeah. yeah. Um. So. I do have a couple, but um, for sure, her name is uh, Karen McDonald. She actually, I don't know if y'all remember, she had owned, um, it was a little toy store downtown called Tree Frog Ed. Tree Uh, Frog Ed. Oh, I don't remember that one. No clue. (laughs) Oh, there you go. First original spot was where Two Tarts is. Okay. And I actually started working there when I was 13, not knowing I mean, I would get paid by toys. <laughs> I didn't know any better. Cool. You know, I was just like, yeah, I got a toy. We should be like, you know, on Friday, like, pick any toy you want. I'm over there with like a $10 toy, like, yeah. You know, I uh-huh. big, but, um, and then she got, she moved and went to where the, um, is it the Prancing Pony or Dancing Pony? Okay. Right next yeah. to the Sea Cats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the second location. And we used to have, um, birthday parties and it was like real science and just, it was really neat. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, when she started the Upstarts program, there was above it. I know that y'all can see it. Like, you know how there's like a studio yeah, there? Yeah. That's where we would meet. Um, so I do. I am so thankful. she was actually one of the people involved in the mm-hmm. Upstarts program. Her, okay. Yes. And then Donna Limley. Donna is actually a teacher now. I'm not sure where, um, what school. And I just know she's a, a teacher, but she, they were both teachers. So they had that kind of you know, they, they wanted to help and they wanted to mentor these kids to show them like, Hey, 
you can become something. It was just very encouraging. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was able to, since I was 13, to be around them, you know, for about a good six years. Yeah, that's awesome. And they did, I didn't realize they were mentoring me. You know, it's just watching, just listening. And um, I owe it a lot to them because I look back now and I'm like, man, how did they do it? Mm -hmm. You know, because you don't think about bills and stuff like that. You know, (laughs) I'm just like, man, how are they paying for all this? But yeah, they toys. Yeah, toys. yeah toys. Toys. I figured. They're yeah. offering everybody else Birthday toys parties. too, right? <laughs> yeah, I got this toy right here. That, that's the real Toy Story. <laughs> that's the real Toy Story. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. That is super cool. I mean, like you said, you um, in in hindsight, being able to see that now, like man, they were actually very much a big part of your life, mentoring yes, that. So, what about you, Cuz? Uh, man, I, I have to say, nobody. I don't think so. I really? Mean, no, I grew up in the Lindy's, man, and shout out to all my Lindy's. And <laughs> <laughs> I grew up, and there was, I mean, we were just in the streets every Y'all day. You had that boxing gym there. Uh, it was Didn't athletic. Y'all... It was called the Athletic Didn't Gym. Didn't How... Yeah. What happened to that place? It went down to Miserines, man. It's it's nothing. But uh, no, anyway, man, yeah, I, so... I can't remember anybody. Um, nobody really. I mean, what, I think what helped me is that my mom and dad always gave me the best advice, always. And then my mom like, forced me to join ROTC, and I loved it. But for real, I would think sports, right? Because I was I was playing football, I was playing basketball, baseball, and I wasn't really great at anything. I was just well rounded. Mm-hmm. Uh, but dancing, I really took off. But my point is, like the coaches and everybody, like real structured, and I wanted to do good in school so that I can play. But um, I would just say probably school sporting events is what helped me get in the right path, right? Because obviously, I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of our family is, you know. Uh, has criminal backgrounds and, you know, mm-hmm. gang affiliated and whatnot. So when I was yeah. growing up, sports took my mind off of all that. Gotcha. And I was able to not get involved in any of that scene. And still to this day, thank God, I mean, I'm almost 40 years old. I haven't, I haven't yeah. just messed with that scene at all. And everybody knows that about me. Mm-hmm. But I would think just basically uh, school programs, okay. dancing for sure was my, that was my way to work my way off and not, not do anything crazy. But um, no, nah, I mean, I, there wasn't really nobody in particular, not once I, until I joined the military, that's when I had like mentors and I had leadership and my, my teammates that really like were, you know, badass yeah. people. And I'm like, man, this is, this is what I want to be like, like these guys, you yeah. know? Yeah. But now I have the most mentors I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Now. I mean, now I got, I got people that really look out for me and, and, and watched, I got a guy named David Hines and he's, he's the best guy in the world, man. And a long time ago, he took me out to eat. He says, Jesse, I, I like you, man. You got you got a lot of um, good things going on. Let's work together. And I was like, Pfft. I was like, you got probably $5 million. I got not even 5000 How can I help you? <laughs> right. But he believed in me and he helped me. And, and hopefully, you know, we, we can continue to do stuff later down. But he gives me a lot of good advice and, you know, a lot of structure. So That's I awesome. will say that for sure. I'm Okay, so... Don't take this the wrong way, viewer, all right? Because Jesse's a great guy. Mm-hmm. But I, the question I'm about to ask you, did you feel like you were, like, in your own, like, um, like in your own world, like, because of, like, who you wanted to be? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Which is probably point. why you didn't, like, care to, like, f- yeah, or feel like you had a, well, something you, like, looked up to that way? Uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, it was funny that he brings that up because all my boys growing up, like, in my grade, they were always at the parties, bonfires, mm-hmm. drinking, you know, trying different things out. And for me, never. Yeah, like, I was it. dancing. I was dancing. I was going to Generation X. I was going to every DJ night out there, Holy Family. And I don't know if you guys know that, because obviously we're, we're speaking on this, but in New Braunfels, there was, a, you know, we used to have DJ nights for all the kids to go to. And that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I didn't care about going to no damn party, getting drunk, or, you know, trying different drugs out, or none of that like that was never my scene so growing up i always knew i was different like i always knew i was going to choose my own path and uh you know somebody told me a long time ago man uh um you know lead follow or get the f out of the way yeah so when i was growing up i was like man nobody can influence me you can't make me do anything and i don't have that one damn tattoo i'm not doing any drugs nothing like you can't what i do i do because i want to nobody's going to make me do that there you go um, that's awesome that's yeah. how i feel so selena let me yeah. ask you now that you know you you were growing up in this upstart program had some great mentors you know you're working for toys and things like that so <laughs> yeah. uh here you are today tell us a little bit more about uh like how has that transitioned into you then ultimately decide and say hey i want to start a business of my own you know i want to be an entrepreneur myself um well it was one of those that i didn't know i wanted to <laughs> it, 
you know, I, I didn't know that I was going to start my own company. It was just something I just did. Um, Take the Nike approach. Yeah. I, I really was just like, Mm -hmm. no, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I don't want, you know, you just, you figure out like, this is not what I want. And now let me ask that. Was that because like life happened or you were maybe had some other jobs or things like that? And you're just like, man, this is not it. Yeah. So I previously worked at other roofing companies and I started out as the worker. Really? Yes, I was. Like you were in the like doing everything the guys were doing right next to them. Yeah, yeah, I was with the guys, Um, and you know, eventually it gets to where you just are like, man, I think I could do this, Hmm. and so then you do it, and then it's like, wow, I didn't realize I didn't know that much. (laughs) (laughs) There's a lot more involved. Business wise, yeah. yeah, Let me ask you this: Um, when you first started with that roofing job, did you apply for that job, or you just went to get a job? How did it start? Like the very first day. Um, so I did, the way it started out was I was previously working or I had applied because they were going to have an all female roofing crew. Okay. Um, so I was like, why not? You know, everybody always asks why roofing? I'm like, I, I, I can't tell you why. It was just like, well, why not? Mm-hmm. You so, know, just and, say God told me to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so did that, uh, went to the certification for GAF and I just loved it. And it's funny because what's up GAF when I, uh, it's a brand. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, um, the she- like there's a shingles brand called GAF and oh, they, okay. um, they certify companies. Um, but the, they made an exception and they had certified us individually. Um, so when I went to the program, it was funny cause I, didn't want to use a nail gun. I was, I don't know why in my head I thought if I pressed it, it was just going to shoot. So I was like, no. And they were like, okay, we'll go ahead and nail. And I was like, oh, I have my hammer. Yeah. And they're just looking at me like, you're going to do a whole roof with one hammer. I'm like, yeah, why not? Mm. Not knowing, you know, but. You don't um, know what the streets I grew up in. I don't (laughs) shoot nothing no more. (laughs) So um, start out there and then it just wasn't aligning up. Those, those, my goals were not aligning with Mm -hmm. that. And, I decided to just, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And I started it. And hey, I, I want to pause there real quick because you just dropped like a nugget of gold for people that are listening, watching, especially I think being entrepreneurs. And uh, you just find so many people that are working, doing something currently that they really don't enjoy, but they won't make a change. But you just said something that was gold. You said it wasn't aligning with what I wanted. Yeah. So you made a change, right? Yeah. You wanted something different. Yeah. And I just think that that's that's huge. And just knowing and understanding like, hey, if I'm currently doing something that's not getting the results that I want from my life, well, then Mm -hmm. a change needs to be made. But sometimes people just don't even have the clarity or the vision to know where they're headed or what it is they want to accomplish. Kind of just going through that rat race every single day when it's like, hey, I'm just looking to meet a paycheck by the end of Friday or pay my bills yeah. and that that's good enough. But so, yeah. you know, that's so insightful for you to like have that awareness, be like, okay, I got to do something. So what'd you do then? So what, what made the change? Um, then I quit. Yes. <laughs> and it was Hell like, yeah. everybody was like, so what are you gonna do? And I was like, I don't know, but I'm not going to work <laughs> like that again. That's for sure. So you quit the company you were working for. Mm-hmm. And then what was the time frame that you just said, I'm going to do my own thing. Like how long did it take? Um, probably about like two days. Mm-hmm. Um, I did wow. go to another roofing company and worked alongside with guys. Yeah. So I was, you know, the guys had me there and I was just part of the guys. And it was nice because I didn't realize how much I didn't know and how much I was being hindered. Oh, so they they taught you a lot. Mm-hmm. Did they yeah. take it easy on you because you were a girl? They're like, no, hey, you're up here. You better work like us. So <laughs> I, I would hear a lot of times, you know, from customers like, oh, you're the favorite, you know, because... Yeah. I mean, I know because from the other company, I knew what needed to be done. And, you know, yeah. sometimes they'd be like, oh, it's OK. You don't have to do it. Or, oh, you know, I think they were, uh, I see, I okay. think they were taking it easy. But I just want to let you know, if I was up there, I'd be like, she better do what, what I'm doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. Period. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I wasn't as fast. Obviously, yeah. they've been doing it, you know, for years, like yeah. 10, 20 years. Um, and then after that, it was slowly trickling. I started to kind of step away from you yeah. know, with the guys every day and just started, you know, doing my own. Just started out doing repairs and just putting myself out there little by little. And I was like, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to do it. I'm just. There you go. How long has it been now? So you've been running um, your own business. So two years. 
two years now. Mm-hmm. So this, that, so that might have been shortly after the the pandemic. Then, yeah. yes, it was. It was okay. right after. Um, and even when I had started, I remember we were wearing even at the um, the certification, we were wearing our masks and yeah. stuff. So it was like barely like right there. Yeah. Um, but working out, you know, in construction stuff, you don't have to worry about COVID. And I think we did actually. We don't say that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I think we did. We did stop. We didn't work for like a couple of weeks because somebody had caught COVID, and then it was mm-hmm. just like everybody got hit with it. But, oh yeah. Um, but yeah, it was around that time. Nice, um, man. Let me ask you this: One thing I see, roofers are always wear long sleeve. You yes. wear long sleeve as well. And this is what I would wear to okay. work. The shoes and everything too. Yeah. Um. I mean, I used to say the same thing, like, oh, why, why would you wear that? Wear some short sleeves. I mean, those shingles will itch. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I didn't even and think about that. And they will burn. Yeah. They are hot. They're itchy. No, you do not. If you, if you see someone that says they're a roofer and they're out there in short sleeve, no, they're not. They're not roofing. They're not doing anything because that itch is like, yeah. I mean, you'll feel it at night. It's like the fiberglass. It's just, yeah. you know, rubbing on you. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so have you ever thought, so have you thought to yourself during that two year time frame, you're like, man, I'm just going to go back to working for somebody else or go find a nine to five. Like, have you ever just wanted to quit? No, 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 I couldn't. I, I enjoy it way too Damn much. Right. Yeah. I just, I couldn't, I, I, I even tell myself like, man, I, I don't know how to even go to me. That's going backwards. Yeah. Be going yeah. backwards to, you know, I, I, mm-mm. well, I applaud you for having the courage to <laughs> go out there and do it, you know, yeah. especially in a male dominated field. You're out yeah. there and like say, Hey, I'm here. I don't give a damn. Nothing's mm-hmm. stopping me. Yeah. It's so that's 99% male dominated. You know, sure. 99%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, Dang, so, that's crazy. That is crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and do you feel like when you go speak to these clients that they're kind of discouraged right off the bat because they're just saying, oh, she's, you know, I don't know if it can be done right. Um, no. So the one thing I do like to say is I don't offer sales. Okay. I offer solutions. Okay. So the minute I go and I'm talking to a customer, it's it's already like. Be, I, and I always tell them too, I'm not a salesman. I'm not here to sell you. I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm going to tell you what you really need. Nice. The only time I've ever had anybody really say anything was I was actually working on a roof and the neighbor, um, she came outside and she's like, young lady, you're not supposed to be up there. <laughs> I just looked down and I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say to that. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. She's like, but good job. <laughs> okay. I like you know? that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. that was that's the only time and you know, when I did start, I did get a lot of um why are you doing that? And yeah. why are you working like that? Why are you doing that kind is, of job? Would you say something that like what does your family say about, you know, like even your kids or even your parents, like what do they say about you being a river? Um, my kids love it. They they just are like, Yeah, you go, mom. You know, <laughs> but um, that is badass. Yeah. yeah. Well, my family now has accepted it, but yeah. I do know it before you know they just kind of laugh and they're like yeah. you you're gonna be a roofer <laughs> like for real mm-hmm. um i do know that my grandfather he's you know, obviously he's older and he was just like ah why why can't she find someone to take care of her oh yeah i was uh, like yeah. Mm, you know <laughs> is that a, okay so that's a good way to go right is that an old school mentality oh like, that is old school mentality you know? and we're breaking the molds from that yeah right? yeah and I, that's like my biggest thing is i want to break cycles i want to just i don't want to repeat anything so yeah. i try to teach my kids like hey don't you know just break it you know even like my cousins when i see the younger ones doing the same thing that their parents are doing i tell them mm. don't be afraid yeah. go out there go mm. leave do something don't don't repeat it just don't repeat the past just i like that you know jerry always says uh not only is he trying to push generational wealth but generational health yeah trying to break mm-hmm. you know obesity and, and yeah. bad health habits all around not yeah. just financially or or entrepreneurship wise but mm-hmm. even a mindset yeah. yeah physical health mental health i mean that it is they all intertwine i was going to ask you about that uh selena like as far as like mindset and you think of maybe that that little girl who was back in the upstart programs and stuff like that like if you could go back and talk to yourself then you know what are what are some of the things that you learn now being in the world of an entrepreneur business owner that you think would be some wisdom to be able to share and say or encourage you know even that younger self um I would say, don't be afraid. Just don't be afraid to be you. 
because I always felt like growing up, like there was something wrong with me, you know, because it was always like, oh, you're stubborn. Oh, you don't, you know, you do your own thing. You're this, you're that. And it's like, but if I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. Yeah, so right. I would, I would have definitely told myself like, you can do it and don't, don't let anybody hold you back. Now those comments, was that stuff like you're hearing from, from family, from peers around you? I mean, was that just... What what were those what were those comments being made from? Yeah, I would say I mean just everywhere, family, teachers, you know, I'm yeah, just anybody, you know. And then growing up, you were around, so you know, obviously the kids you grew grew up with, and they're in the neighborhood, and those kids did go, you know, yeah. the other way, and it was just. So before things maybe people thought was a, a detriment to you were actually now detrimental for you yeah. being able to be where oh, you're at yeah. now. I do know when I did have my, when I did get pregnant, I was pregnant in high school. Um, and I did hear from family that I was an embarrassment. Yeah. Um, I was told you're never going to be anything. That child's never going to be anything, you know? Um, and now he graduated with his honors from private school. Nice. Um, he, you know, he's on track. He wants to go to New York and, become a lawyer and yeah. business, you know? So it's just like when he graduated, I had so many emotions because it was like, you know, I remember when I had found out I was pregnant and everybody was yeah. like, oh, that's, you're never going to be anything. You're so embarrassing, you know? And it was like... I'll oh. call him back. Get the dije puta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> call them all back, man. Bleep that out. Bleep that out. No. <laughs> Bleep that out. Say we can say whatever we want to say. Right? Univision <laughs> Station. Yeah. So, so tell us about your family. Tell yeah. Me. I mean, you were saying you got, you got, you got one litter, you got two litter, you got... You got mm -hmm. children. Yeah, right? yeah, so, yeah. I do. You get your first. We, we all have kids up here. Yeah, and, and J Rock's kind of like one of our other children. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like their kids. <laughs> yeah, so He's like I, a little brother. I do have a past, you know. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, I thought that um, my first husband was going to be. You know, you always have that, like, oh, we're going to be together forever. So you know, yeah, like, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he was like high school <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> no, no comment here. You know? yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I was <laughs> married for, um, my first marriage was 13 years, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, 13 years. Um, and hey, that's had, pretty good today's standards. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how many kids do you have total? I have five. Five, so okay. three with my first marriage and then try to do it again. Yeah. Didn't work. No, I get it. <laughs> hey, trust them, me. But, I'm right there with you. But I will say that um, being older, what I've learned is... Um, with my older, with the older kids, I feel like I didn't get to appreciate and enjoy them as much as I do my little one. He's three yeah, and he's so fun. And it makes me understand why grandparents are so cool. Yeah. Like, why do grandparents love me so much? Well, it's because <laughs> you get, you know, you just get to enjoy them. And I mean, I'm thankful my older ones, you know, they're just really great kids. Like all my kids are great kids, but hmm. that little one is... You know, he's he he gets away with stuff. I know he does, but I mean, I just I don't know. It is different, you know. The older you get, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, like they say, grandparents would be like, if we could have the grandchildren before the children, we would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Selena, man, you are a living testament about that upstart program. Like, I think yeah. we should, that DJ, Social Plug Media, and yourself, we should go to one of these schools, you know, and be like, hey, listen, oh, yeah. this is, look at the positive effects that Upstart program mm -hmm. can have on, you know, somebody who doesn't think they're going to make it. Yeah, right? I do know um, some of the friends that I did have. I know one of them is a police officer now. Whoa. I mean, a lot of them that I can remember are not, you know what they said we were going to be. Yeah. You know, I like that. have great careers yeah. now. I would, I would get behind that. Like if we can get involved yeah. somehow, yeah. some way, like, I wish it would, I wish it would reopen. And it's crazy. Cause one of this, one of the things that stuck to me the most is when we were in Luling, there was a teacher and we were trying to advocate and say like, Hey, teachers have a big impact on children. They really yeah. do. And one of them, I mean, you just know when teachers hearts are in it or not. And mm -hmm. one of them was just like, I don't even know why I'm here. And, I don't even know why if they don't want to work that, you know, just let them. And I was looking at her like, I cannot believe that, you know, and Man, a lot of these teachers have, uh, you know, they go into wanting to be a teacher and then they have these life events that happen mm -hmm. to them and they just like any other person, which are human, you take it to work with you. And unfortunately that has to be where kids are at. Yeah. And then you end up having this personality and the kids, you know, it's just, it's really hard sometimes, especially the kids that you actually want to, 
um, make an impact in because you can tell when they come to you, hey, there's lots of things, you know, whether it is their personality, the where they're dressed, sometimes the way that they look, you're like, man, something's yeah. going on at home and all you want to do is help them. But then again, you know, um, yeah, it's tough for some of these teachers, but at the end of the day, that's what I appreciated about that program, you know, was that um, I knew what was going on at home and I, don't get me wrong, it, my my household wasn't bad, but there was times where I didn't want to go home because I really felt like there was more to do. And I didn't know that as a kid, but, oh, well, let me go to this after school program. I get to work out. I get to play basketball. Now I go home at seven or eight. Now I only get, you know, dinner, a couple hours. And then it's like, okay, next day we're going. And I really like that about that. So I, I would, that, yeah, it is really cool, Jesse, if we could. I would do it. Impact, I'm all awesome. in. I would love to yeah. do that. That'd be so yeah. cool, man. Seriously. Okay. That'd be hella cool. I actually, you know, volunteer with a shark, uh, Shark Tank style program yeah. at uh, one of the local high schools here. There, there's some incredible kids and ideas and mm -hmm. the things that they're doing. But you think about that, that could completely change the trajectory for maybe one child if they were just exposed to an environment or someone that, you know, showed them like, hey, something could be different or what's out there and what the opportunity is. So, hey, I'm, I'm curious, you know, from one entrepreneur to another, I listen to it, whether it's a lot of podcasts, maybe reading some books, but what helps you stay sharp as an entrepreneur? Like, what do you do for yourself, either personal growth? I mean, what's uh, keeps you like mentally healthy? You know, what are some of the outlets or things you do when you're not on the roof? Um, so <laughs> when I'm not on a roof, believe it or not, <laughs> I actually have another job. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I okay. do. Um, and the way that it came about was uh, my best friend. Um, so she's a hearing instruments, hearing instrument specialist, and she works for an audiology office that just opened. Hmm. And so it was like, hey, we just opened. You know, we could use the help. You want to come? And I was like, sure, but I can't do full time. Obviously, I never, you know, I don't want to do that. I was like, but I don't mind helping because um, it is to help, you know, with hearing you know so i was like yeah yeah i can go um i was like i'll just do tuesday wednesday thursdays well it seems like the minute i agreed to that my <laughs> business just shot up mm -hmm. and so, so my downtime believe it is actually when i'm at my second job because yeah that's the only time i actually have to sit down and i you know and thankfully i love dr sally um she's with here in texas i love that she is so flexible if i'm like oh. hey i take this call i just run to the hallway with mm -hmm. book and i'm like sally's roofing empire you know <laughs> <laughs> my scrubs and everything so yeah hey, i love that yeah so i do that and um i don't think i've had a day off since february Honestly, like a completely started from the these guys, you're here, right? yeah, these, yeah, guys but, right? these guys sitting across yeah. from me the exact always, same way. What's yeah. good is it you have to, business wise, you have to constantly be thinking of what the next thing is. And roofing, yes, it is a great job, but we do have a down season. Like there is a time that yeah. it you can't you can't work on a roof when it's raining, obviously. And then if it's raining and cold, so during that time I can be at the office, you know, oh, yeah. Dr. Sally's willing to Sure. She's always waiting. She's like, so when are you going to be full-time? I'm like, mm, no. So <laughs> let, let me ask you this. No, Since you're working on these clients that, or patients, I should say, right? Mm -hmm. um, see, Jerry and I, we do life insurance. Okay. And we do DJing, mm -hmm. right? But And then also real estate too. But the point is, is that when we're doing DJing, we can actually like, as they get our information, they, they trust us. Mm -hmm. So then later on, they could become our life insurance clients. Yeah. And vice versa. If there are life insurance clients, they trust us already. Mm -hmm. They might hire us with DJs. Do you feel like you're able to do that with that job or is that kind of difficult to piggyback? Um, I don't think it's difficult. I think um, it's just a lot of them are in homes. Mm, okay, so, so it's elderly folks. Mm -hmm, okay, yeah. I see. I mean, not all of them. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're starting to see people in their late 30s mm -hmm. because you have the AirPods and, you know, you don't think about that kind of stuff. What? Um, but... What was that? Oh. <laughs> I was like, uh, <laughs> um, he so, always has his AirPods. Yeah, yeah, I those, yeah I, I, I'm learning. And another thing about it too is, I always think to myself, you know, if I ever wanted to be an, a hearing instrument specialist, I could. Yeah, it's something else that I could do. It's always thinking, always, you know, yeah. trying to think of ways that I can grow. I don't have to do roofing. I can do something else now. I mean, it's just yeah. that's what's nice. But yeah, as far as piggybacking, I don't. 
if they say if they mention something like oh you know our house just got beat up i'm like oh hey well i can go check it out for you for free like yeah. you know there you but go i don't do no i don't do it like all the time yeah. that's what i'm talking see. about that segue so mm-hmm. in, in talking about it and then thinking of like what's next for the future of the business and where you're at so what are some of the goals what's the vision for sal's roof and empire what's in store for for you guys um I don't want to ever stray away from the fact of like why I started. Um, So whenever anybody calls, when they call the company, they're going to call me. They talk to me. I'm the one that meets them. I'm the one that does the repair. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's out there all the time. And up until the last nail is picked up, I am involved. And I don't ever want to stray away from that. Um, So I want to make sure that that it stays that way. Not saying that I need to be little. I'm just saying that um, I don't want to ever be that company when you call and you speak to receptionists and the receptionist has to send out some a repair guy and the repair, you know, there's just too many hands involved. Sure. I want to keep it yeah. to where it's personable and I'm I'm involved and there for my clients all the time. Love it. Love it, man. So we have learned a ton today about ordinary people doing extraordinary things, oh. whether going right, right here, the upstart program, you know, little Selena up yeah. in that class there. <laughs> yes. Also, you know, working at the toy store, you drop some incredible nuggets of being an entrepreneur, having clarity and vision and just doing it right. Taking going the out, saying, you know what, I'm not going to wait for someone to tell me or give me permission or say it's okay for to be a woman roofer, but I'm just going to go out, make it happen. I want different from my family, sharing right. stuff about your children and you know everything that you're doing. So that's exactly what we want to do here on the Social Plug Podcast. So yes. things have been phenomenal today, man. So, you. you know, we got uh, special thanks to Jay Rizzo, Jay Rock, producer oh, behind the scenes back there, you, man. You know, adding to the conversation today. And also, big shout out to my co-host right here and cousin, MC Jesse E. That's me, so baby. What's up? Dat DJ. So, Selena, look into the camera right there. Tell everybody where they can find you and reach out, get in contact. Um, so, you can contact me. The best way is through text or call um, my cell phone, 830-481-2420. You can find me on Facebook. I have a TikTok and... Um, yeah, I don't have Instagram. Sal's Roofing Empire, <laughs> right? Yeah, Sal's Roofing Empire. I like Empire. it. There you go. Yeah. Hey, and on behalf of Dad, DJ, MC, Jesse, E, let them know where they can find us here yes. online. Let me tell you what. You can go to datdj.com, D-A-T-D-J.com. You also can find us at our um, on my personal Instagram, which is insurance by day, DJ by night. And Jerry, what's yours? Jerry underscore the DJ. Jerry underscore the DJ. Yes. And you can also find us at Downtown Social or the Backyard in Seguin when we don't have private gigs. But I will say that the private gig season is coming up with wedding season. <laughs> so we're going to be very busy, but we love it, man. And we love what we do. Um, and the cool thing is we get to have fun. You know, it doesn't even feel like work. You know, don't get me wrong. The setup and breakdown, that's work you know, for sure. We're sweating, but the actual DJ and stuff, man, we get to have a good time. So we yeah. love it. There you go. So like yeah. Selena just said too, she's like, hey, love what you do, right? You never yes. work a day in your life. You exactly. love showing up to work, taking care of others. So just like we do. So guys, we appreciate y'all. It's a social plug podcast powered by Ooh. Social Plug Media, connecting you to level up. And we are officially <laughs> unplugged, y'all. <laughs> We'll see y'all next time.